Welcome to the Painting of the Week podcast, where we look at some of the most significant paintings throughout history. Introducing your hosts, Phil Grabsky and Laura Bentham. Welcome to um, this week's Painting of the Week. And we've got an interesting one today. To For those who are listening to it um, right now, i.e. round about the 1st, 2nd, 3rd of February, this painting is um, being looked at because it celebrates, or we are celebrating, Chinese New Year. We are. It's uh, actually today when we're recording today, it. Mm. First of um, February. We haven't got our tiger jumpers on. Is it? Is it? Is it? Yeah. Tiger. Yeah. So you know, you're going to see people wandering around. You're like, oh, that's why they're wearing a tiger jumper. Do you know one of the best things I ever did in India is <laughs> go to a tiger reserve. <laughs> I didn't think you were going to say that. Phil. <laughs> Got off on a. <laughs> Six times we went out on the Land Rover and didn't see a tiger. And the very last chance, the very last morning, we saw this tiger and it walked right next to us. It was the most beautiful oh, thing. Yeah, Absolutely that would fantastic. be lovely. Six beautiful. times, though, you had to go. Yeah, my daughter got some wonderful photos. Oh, OK. Um, there we go, then. So that makes up And that's it. Jobs. That's painting in the book. <laughs> <laughs> so, painting of the week. Um, <laughs> and we are looking at a work by, uh, appropriately enough, a Chinese artist... Um, Kai Xuan Feng. Now, I will um, immediately declare that I had not heard of her before this artwork was suggested, and um, we'll talk about that, but I suspect that many of us are a little bit guilty of focusing on the quote-unquote great Western masters, and occasionally mistresses, Hmm. um, and not looking as much as we should to the art of Asia or Africa or South America or and so on and so forth. And yet we are surrounded by it. And yet we are surrounded by With it. With pottery, silks, calligraphy. Yeah. I love callig- calligraphy, I really do. So, yeah. I mean, we have talked before about how significant the arrival of Japanese art was to French, or let's say the Impressionists in particular, in the middle of the 19th century because Japan had been closed and so when it suddenly opened and this artwork started arriving they had simply never seen anything like no. it and we did one film Van Gogh in Japan just on that subject but he was very Japanese art was very influential on the works of Mary Cassatt and um, Claude Monet and Degas and I mean the list goes on and on did they just did it actually arrive in... Did it come to Paris or did they just... They were just aware of it? So basically, Japan was shut. Yeah. And there was a little bit of of uh, trade with the Dutch, but very little. Anyway, things changed and it's about 1860, 1861 when Japan opens up. And so, yeah, artwork starts arriving with other, with other oh, things. OK. Um, so you get this period of real interest in Japan called Japanisma where, you know, people would start dressing in, in kimonos and their houses, with, but just an absolute fascination, not least in the art. And, um, in fact, when we were researching Van Gogh in Japan, we went to a shop, Little Back Street, which was still selling Japanese art and which claimed to have been a very shop that some of these artists, there was more than one, but a gallery where some of these artists would go and look, like Van Gogh, um, and unfortunately, the week we went was the week it was closing down. Oh. It did mean I managed to get one wood print, which is very lovely yeah. for next Brilliant. to nothing. Yeah. Um, but you can see how it was very influential in terms of subject matter, in terms of use of colour, and in, in all sorts of different ways. And in fact, when Van Gogh went to south of France, southern France, he went because he was looking for the nearest kind of location that would feel Japanese that he could find. Oh, OK. So partly to do with light, partly to do with cherry trees and cherry blossom and because he didn't want to go all the way to Japan. Anyway, this particular work... Mm. Now, if somebody were to say to you, <clears throat> um, what we're going to do now is we're going to look at a contemporary artist who's, who's, who's painted on a coffee filter... <laughs> Okay, so for those of you who are not already on the seventh-art.com website and looking at the artwork, you might at this point have thought to yourselves, what? 
a, co- a coffee filter. <laughs> I'm used to my canvas <laughs> uh, or maybe my ceiling or, or my wooden. Uh, but it's... So this is what we know about... Well, what do we know? What, I know you've been doing some research, Laura. Yeah. So what do we know about her process? Well, that she... Yeah, well, what's the artwork like, called? Ah, oh, really? yeah. So it's called, yeah. Filters a coffee or cafe. And it's number 130 in the end we've picked. Okay, so coffee There's filter. There's quite a lot of them. Coffee filter number 130. Mm. And obviously it's a coffee filter, but to me, when I first saw it, like I said to you, I think the other day, it looked like a fan. So lovely. But she gets her coffee filters. Now, whether she does them herself or she gets them from the local cafe, I still need to clarify that. I don't know. I don't think cafes use filters, do they? No. They use the machines. So it has to be her own. But then she, whatever stain is after the coffee, then she uses it as the sort of beginnings of the background. And then that leads me straight on to the first question of, does she use different types of coffees, depending on what sort of backgrounds she wants, because that's where I would, I'd would i start fiddling and doing it. But they, they certainly are. Well, there's a number of things. Because you're, you're, you're a great <laughs> seamstress with you know, re, but reusing materials. I do, yes. So I know well, that. So that. I definitely do look at people's shirts on their backs. <laughs> yeah, but, that, but that will chime with you, because this, yeah. is, this is a used object mm. being reused in a completely different way, but to create something really rather beautiful. Mm. I mean, it's a very good example, again, of, yeah, you know, before you jump to a conclusion, have a look. Yes. So somebody says to you, I'm going to an exhibition of drawings on coffee filters, you're probably <laughs> going to think, mm, yeah, maybe not. But actually, oh. it's fantastic. It is. So you asked the question, I mean, I, I've, I have no idea, this is all supposition, but I would imagine, just by looking at some of the other ones, that she makes her cup of coffee. One supposes that she made a cup of coffee one day and she saw the, the filter lying on the kitchen table Yeah. and thought, well, that's quite interesting, the way that those the, the brown stain is. It almost looks like, I don't know, clouds or something. And then with a obviously a very tiny brush, yeah. um, coffee filter number one, which I haven't seen, she may have started to draw something, but this is coffee number 130. 130. And what I found was the more I looked at it, the more things I started to see. Mm. So, first of all, um, clearly you've got you've got the trees, which are, I think, beautifully rendered with the white leaves and which, for me, have a kind of sense of movement about them. Yeah. So it feels a little bit agitated, like a little bit... And then that's confirmed for me because you've got the person on the bridge walking out across the water and if you look carefully you can see the water is quite choppy so the whole thing feels a little blowy and then there's the boat that's moored presumably tied to that tree with the knot at the bottom um it's so funny because i wouldn't normally go for this i would not normally think it's because it's so dark i wouldn't have thought i would have liked these at all but and she and she doesn't have any colour, does she, on any of the others either? They're just ink and and white. Hmm. But they're so effective with the dark frame as well, with the black. The way they're framed, yeah. they stand out beautifully. And I it's think... definitely. I'm, I'm always the one. I'm always like, oh, I love the colours, Phil. Hmm. But I must admit, on this, 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 this is these are really something. I think. Well, we're sitting in your lounge, which is <laughs> undoubtedly the most colourful lounge of anybody I know, which is fantastic because I think that reflects. I'm not saying that people who have dark lounges are necessarily dark people. But no. I think there's a sense if somebody has a really colourful environment it does reflect their character to yeah. some extent but actually, i actually would have that now hanging on my wall and i would never have thought i would have said that well i did i thought it was very interesting you mentioned the frame so i think the frame makes a huge difference mm. um and uh i think that's always the case i've just been filming actually and we were talking about this with some impressionist works um some landscapes where the original quite simple frames have been replaced by these kind of much grander gallery, gold, big chunky frames. Yeah. And it changes the way you see the picture. 
Yeah. It's uh, it gives them a it gives them a which is why they do it. It gives them a grandeur and a this is a work of art, which is just definitely different to the kind of simple wooden frames that the painters themselves would have would have used. Yeah. Um, and I think this is very nicely framed against. I mean, we haven't seen them in real life, but it looks no. like it's a blackish frame, and then a kind of greyish. And it almost looks graduated the background, but I suspect that's just the lighting. I even love the fact that she's not even tempted to cut off the filter bit, the mm. the, the seam. Yeah. That she's left it as a filter. Yeah. It is they are really, really they are so they and if you start looking at some of the others, but there is, they're amazing. Now there is that link back. Again, we um you know a, a film about Claude Pissarro. The uh, poster image that the Ashmolean in Oxford's using, and we're also using a section of it, but the actual original picture is a fan. Okay. What, of his? That he painted, yeah. Okay. So sometimes artists were commissioned to paint fans, and you, obviously you've seen fans, and some of them are very, yeah. very beautiful. Mm. Exactly this shape, because we're, again, we're always used to the kind of the landscape or the portrait, but the, you know, it's f four corners, 90 degrees. It's unusual. Even when you sometimes see a, a rondo, a circular painting, it feels a little unusual. But to see something like this... It should be nice to have a there, So she did another video, which I think we both watched, a uh, performance piece, mm. where she's... So she's wearing a silk white dress, which apparently she designs a, a different one each time she performs. And then she puts her hair into ink mm. and then on this massive white piece of paper does like this calligraphy letters mm. it's really really beautiful yeah she definitely got an air about her we, I think we were saying that weren't we when uh, it's quite it's interesting in the um, Van Gogh in Japan mm. there is a Japanese artist who also has very very long black hair and um, dresses in a very kind of um noticeable way and she has a canvas or a big paper on the floor and she just paints with ink big black ink which i mean calligraphy yeah but ink, it's very it's, it is performative it is like it is performance and it's all kind of flows there's very little adjustment correction it'd be quite something to get it with your hair though i mean it's quite yeah, yeah. No, that's quite something yeah it's interesting those those pictures with her hair i'm not I was trying to think if I would, if I, if I thought it was a big brush, whether that would make it different to thinking that it's somebody's hair. Yeah. You're not so you're not sure you're going to have that one. I, well, I think for me with the hair, I guess there's a sense of it being com almost that that much more random. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's not, is it? I don't think. I think somehow the with a brush, you feel that mm. it's slightly more controlled what the what mm. the artist is trying to do. Mm. Whether that matters or not, I guess, is up to the individual viewer. Yeah. But getting back to this... Um, oh, it's beautiful. It's so beautiful. But when you look, again, I mean, this must be quite small in real life, all the coffee filters, aren't they? <laughs> but you look at the top. Yeah. Four birds, I can see, maybe oh, yeah, five. Yeah. I hadn't even noticed those. They are spot on. I mean, mm. they're the tiniest little... Mm. I mean, she's a really good artist. They're the tiniest little marks... But they absolutely look like birds in flight. Yeah, she has. It's just, oh, I love I love Chinese old fabrics and I love all of it. It's funny because it's not normally something I would say. Normally I like big and bold. But, yeah, I think most people are quite drawn to it. I think it's the... Um, I mean, I don't know China so well. I went to Beijing once to discuss a possible exhibition on screen, which unfortunately didn't, didn't happen, but... What was it about old... Chinese masters? No, actually, it was, it was mid-20th century um, movement. Okay. Uh, in, interesting enough, these artists... Anyway, another story. But <laughs> but um, I, know, I know Japan better, and I absolutely love, in Japan, the attention to detail. Mm. So you'll walk down a little street, and everyone's got tiny little gardens, but absolutely beautiful little pebbles, and the, like six pebbles mm. around it. I mean, it's just... There's a real sense of... <laughs> The, the, I don't know, that, that ability to craft and, and, you know, find joy. Yeah. 
and creativity in, in fine detail. Well, they do that with everything, though, don't they? Even if they're making a cup of tea. Yeah. <laughs> Just get out the tea, I biscuits. Know. I know. And they, theirs is a proper ritual. I should have been uh, dressing up today with the other, you know, thing on my arm. <laughs> we wouldn't get as much done, though. We? <laughs> we don't get anything done anyway, to be, Phil. To be fair. <laughs> um, yeah. So... 100% everyone needs to look at the other ones and her performance piece because I think they're, it's stunning and didn't think I would say that. We always say that we would try to find things we're not so keen on. Hmm. Well, I'm not doing very well at all. No, this isn't one of those. No, I would totally have this in my house. So the other ones that she's done, the coffee filters that we've seen... Are they similar scenes? Uh, yes, nearly all landscapes. Right. But isn't that what Chinese artists are known for, mainly? I would say so. Yeah. yeah, I yeah. thought that was... Maybe I'll say something. No, 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 I'd, I'd say so. Do you? I mean, <laughs> when I went to Beijing, I went to... I mean, it's, very, it's, it's one of those places that until you go there, you don't really have any conception. No. It is a... I mean, it's such... Extraordinarily commercial city. So you drive you drive down the main roads and every brand you could possibly imagine oh, okay. is there. Yeah, yeah. But and there's shopping malls and five star. I mean it's just mm. a big, big, big mm. city. Um but then you go out just a touch further and you start going to some of the galleries, and these are really fancy buildings full of contemporary art. Right. And you know, it's probably about five years since I went, and and I went at the time when Chinese art was being talked about and bought and sold a lot. So, you know, 19, sorry, 2015, 2016. I don't know so much now. Right. Obviously, COVID's affected everything. Do you think a documentary would be brilliant, though? It would have I been. Mean, it would have there, been yeah. good. Are and, there many out there, documentaries? No. About Chinese artists? Mm. Mm. I mean, I just don't know. I mean, before t- today or this week... And I've asked people as well. Uh, I think the only people that anyone or said to me was about Ai Weiwei. Ai Weiwei, yeah. Yeah. But other than that, really, people were struggling to name any Chinese artist, which is not good, is it, really? Well, I, I hope mean... I listeners are not. I mean, like, they're all going to say something, aren't they? <laughs> I mean, I think you could spend a lifetime <laughs> looking at Chinese art. I think so. And these contemporary artists, I, I admit I didn't know them, but... And some of it was good and some of it, you know, is is just bits of metal banged together. But, you know, it was a mix yeah. in my eyes. Mm. But um, we went to three gal- contemporary galleries they were, and there were big galleries and they were completely full. And I know some of this stuff is being, is being snapped up. It's very hard to judge. You know, it it, it is difficult to know when something, particularly contemporary art, I think, you know, when it has quality, what mm. its value is. Mm. And I think the market sometimes kind of tumbles across itself. You know, something, if an artist starts to get a bit, bit of a name, then others start thinking, oh, someone else has already taken responsibility for the quality of that, therefore the price goes up. And if yeah. the price is going up, people mm. think, oh, they must be good. Um, the advantage of something like this is you can see the craft. Now, I don't know the value of it and I don't know how the value will accumulate over the years, but you can certainly see this is a, I, my opinion, a talented artist. Yeah. Um, Might go up now because we're talking about her. <laughs> um, I doubt it. <laughs> Well, you never know. Oh, no, she might be ringing up. Mind you... Don't, don't put it out. <laughs> but, but, but mind you, we might... I mean, it might seem very impressive to us, but there might be thousands of Chinese artists that can can do this quality of work. Well... I think yeah. I mentioned before, I have bought... I did buy a painting from a, one of those Chinese suppliers. I hesitate to use the word art factory, but they are really, where you send them... a an image of the picture you want, and then they paint it for you. Oh, right. Oh, I've never heard of that. Uh, I got a Caravaggio done, and it came back. It's oil I never, no, no, on no, canvas. No, you could do that. <laughs> yeah. And it was really... Was it good? Yeah, it was. It was really pretty good. <laughs> oh, that's brilliant. And it was, I, don't know, I can't remember now, two, three hundred dollars. Um, I haven't seen that in your house. 
It a, I gave it as a gift to my brother, actually. <laughs> Uh, that is so good. I had no idea that you could do that. Yeah. Okay. But you, I uh, have seen a picture, and it does kind of brings you up a bit short because I've seen a picture of one of these places where just row upon row of artists all kind of painting away. Oh, okay. Well, that's um, really interesting. But it's a bit like... Yeah, yeah, um, that's amazing. You think back to, you know, the potteries, all those wonderful artists painting, whether it was Wedgwood or whoever, but just, you yeah. know, there must be really fine artists painting the designs on the plates, the vases, whatever it might be. You were saying about some of the old artists that used to always copy paintings and then they end up to be an amazing artist in their own right. So maybe some of these people that, you know, mm. or somebody who sent that, that picture to could actually, if they've been painting Caravaggio for long enough, could be just an amazing artist in their own right. Yeah. well, I Do think... it enough. But then it, that's that's... I went into a gallery once where there were some photographs on the wall mm. and they were on sale for £20,000 each. But they were big, big landscapes, black oh. and white landscapes. Yeah. Nicely printed, nicely mm. framed. And I was with the gallery owner and I said, I don't mean to be funny, but, I mean, I'm a bit short of cash, frankly. <laughs> and I'm actually, I can take better landscapes than that. Right. So if I was to get, if I was to take six landscapes, print them like that, frame them like that, would you put them on sale for half that price, £10,000 each? Yeah. He said, no. I said, why not? My, I, I said, it would be for you to decide, but my, uh, my view is that my landscapes would be better. He said, yeah, but you don't have a name. <laughs> you don't have a name in the market. So that particular artist, mm. photographer, mm. had a name. Right. And that's where art becomes kind of tradable commodities. You know, people yeah. think, I don't know what to do with my money. There's no point putting it in a bank. So I'll, I'll take someone's advice and buy something and hopefully it will accumulate value. Um, I've never bought, I mean, I, haven't, I don't own much art, but I've never bought art on the basis of thinking it might accumulate no. value. Oh, No. Uh, but obviously, I, but I don't have I don't have a huge amount of disposable income whereby no. you're thinking, what am I going to do with this? Plus, anything that we now buy this now, I mean, probably isn't going to accumulate enough value until a long way down the line, really. Not unless you took a risk on. I mean, this mm. is yeah. <laughs> but it's quite interesting though. I went when I was in Beijing. One of the gallery, I went to a studio of a really nice artist who. I wouldn't say he's impressionistic, but he was. There were landscapes that, again that weren't so dissimilar to this, but there were there was more colour to them, and um, there was less details. Uh, it was very very beautiful, and I thought, oh, I'd love one of those. Mm. I didn't know much about him. I'd just been introduced to him, and it was a big studio, but it was outside Beijing, and he was he had a lot of these canvases lying around. So I thought. So I said, <laughs> I really really like that this particular one. I said, you know. <laughs> what 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 might you be selling it for? Anyway, the price was just <laughs> I mean, five figures in dollars. Oh, okay. I, mean, I think he, he, he might even have been slightly offended that I asked. Oh, okay. But it was like, I can't remember how much, but 20, 30, oh, 40. Oh, right, 000. okay, oh, right. And I thought, well, good good on you, mate, because mm. if, if you can generate that for that one mm. and you've got 20 or 40 or 60 or 80 knocking about. Yeah, wow. You're going to do absolutely fine, and why not? Yeah. So... Anyway, getting back to this picture, I think yes. it's a very good example of um, having a look at something that if the explanation of it or the introduction to it seems a bit off-putting, i.e., yeah, she's a contemporary artist, so you might know her because she paints with her hair, but she's painted on some coffee filters. Mm. That might put you off. But, you know, be open to it, have a look. Actually, they're really, really nice, oh, I think. Yeah. Very delicate. Secondly, mm. and maybe it's something we can do more, uh, in the paintings of the week, but also it's definitely definitely something I'm trying to be as open and um, encouraging about as possible for exhibition on screen. Hence, I went to Beijing, part of the reason we did Van Gogh in Japan, um, even doing Frida Kahlo, you know, she's a Mexican artist. So we're trying to be as broad geographically as possible, but don't be afraid to, you know, look at artists that you've never heard of, look at countries um, that you maybe don't give too much attention to and certainly don't fall into the trap of thinking anything that's not French, Italian, German, British or even American mm. isn't of the same quality because that's 
a complete nonsense. Absolutely. I mean, very little beats beats Luxor in Egypt, <laughs> if you want, for yeah. statues, oh, God. Um, et cetera, et cetera. So yeah. many examples well, we I've not been there either. Yeah. Um, and and it's a, and again, it's another good example of of you know having a close look at something and trying to see the beauty within it. I think there's so many levels of narrative. You know, the person crossing the bridge, and I'd love to chat with her actually. The but every time, yeah, but every time she picks up a filter and's be like, okay, so I mean, there are figures on some of them, and and all sorts of really gorgeous landscapes, and how does she decide? Or does it does it just come as she's doing it, or does she actually plan them? They're just great. I mean, it'd be um, nice to think that it is one, you know, mm. it is genuine, and she isn't now just, you know, making cups of coffee just to create the filters <laughs> to paint onto. No, it'd be I mean, good if she was, uh, yeah, recycling. I and, think she's, um, yeah. But I mean, 130 is is a lot in one sense, but I mean, it's not it's not a thousand. No, and they're quite. I mean, coffee filters are not big, so it'd be interesting to see. I mean, I get well as I said, it's the size of a coffee filter, isn't it? Mm -hmm. um, so our painting of the week this week uh, celebrates Chinese New Year. Yeah, and uh, we haven't touched on Chinese New Year, so we ought to say. Okay, what else do we need to know about? Uh, I, tell me about, tell me about I Chinese... love the story, don't I? I love What's... the story of the animals. I don't know the story. What's the story of? Well, they all have a little race. And um, who's they? All oh, the animals that come forward for the race by the em uh, the Emperor Jade, oh, who yeah. back in the day decides to have a race with all the animals, to, and whoever comes first and everything. The, and I love the little stories of each one. And of course, there's twelve. So there's quite a few, so I won't bore everybody with it. But it's always worth a little look. Are there twelve? Mm, twelve animals. Mm, yeah, and the rat does win. But the rat does it by cunning because he talks his way onto the back of the ox to get across this river. There's this massive river they have to to get over, which is you know, it's quite it's quite tricky, especially if you're a rat. <laughs> and I'm a snake, and I wrap my uh, myself around the horse's leg. Yeah. And then when I get to the other side, I frighten the horse. I don't even let the horse win or get past me, and then I go on and get across. And you said you're a rabbit. Yeah, somewhere I remember being being a rabbit. Okay, so then the, the the rabbit does quite well, but um, there is a, the only mythical creature being the dragon. And the dragon's really wonderful because the dragon goes off and saves the villagers with a with you know helps them with a fire. So he that's the reason he doesn't come first. The dragon helps them with a fire. Yeah, he can, it's a bit weird, though, isn't it? Yeah, he goes and helps them. I'm assuming he does. He, I don't know how he does it, but anyway, blows he, out he blows fire. out the fire. So who wins this race? The rat. Oh, the rat wins. Mm. Yeah. Because he's cunning. But the dragon does come along because the rabbit's a bit stuck on his raft and he goes a bit off course and so he blows the rabbit a bit more on course so that he actually saves the rabbit, which is dead cute because the, the mm. rabbit didn't know that. But so, if you're reading a little book tonight to your children, the Chinese New Year, if you wanted to look at the little story, it's ever so sweet. All right. Maybe it's made up. Oh, I love it. My 20-year-old kids will be thrilled. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they were all I'll get tuck, tuck off in bed tonight. Turn your TikTok off from TikTok <laughs> off for a moment with a cup of with a cup of coffee I'm that gonna, we can use the filter from. Going to talk to you about the rat race. Oh yeah, oh, <laughs> yeah. not that rat race. I mean the Chinese New Year. <laughs> oh, it's lovely. It's a nice story. It's lovely. So yeah, <laughs> very nice. Yeah. What oh. are you eating tonight? Soup. <laughs> Because the Chinese oh. is closed. Because <laughs> it's Chinese get, New Year. Yeah, exactly. I can't even get a takeaway. <laughs> uh, there you go. Well, anyway, so, um, Kaishuan Feng. Yes. We Thank really, you. Thank you. We really, really like this. Mm. And, um, yeah. Maybe one day she'll come and have a chat with us on Painting of the Week. Yeah. We could look at some more of her things. That'd be nice, wouldn't it? It'd be great. Yeah. Actually, we've got, um, I don't know, we're going to a... Uh, uh, a gallery, aren't we? Anyway, Is that that's, next for, week? that's for another painting. Oh, I'm super week. excited about that. <laughs> All right. See you next week. <laughs> Thank you for listening to the Painting of the Week podcast. For more information, please visit our website at seventh-art.com or contact us by emailing info at seventh-art.com. See you next time.